This diagram is going to look at excess supply and excess demand and how understanding these concepts help us to understand how we arrive at the equilibrium price. If you're not sure about supply, demand or equilibrium, you should watch the videos on those topics. The interaction of supply and demand gives us an equilibrium price of P1 and an equilibrium quantity of Q1. We can see how we can arrive there. If the price was not equal to P1, for example, if it was P2. Because the price is so high, businesses would want to supply more of this product. In this case, they would be willing to supply Q2. Because the price is this high, consumers won't want to buy that many. They would only want to, supply, to uh, demand Q3. We end up with what we call an excess of supply. This is how much the supply is greater than the demand for the product. In real life for a business, this looks like too much stock on their floor. They have Q3, Q2 products uh, on, on for sale, but only Q3 of them are being sold. Because businesses need to sell their product, they will decrease the price. If they decrease their price down to P3, they will still have an excess supply. They will still have too much stock on the stock floor and they will keep on reducing the price. This will continue until they reach equilibrium at P1. If the price was lower than P1, so now we're going to make our, equal, our price P2 lower than P1. Because the price is so low, consumers want to buy more of it. The demand for this product will be at Q2. Because there isn't much money to be made out of selling this product, businesses won't want to supply that many. In this case, they supply Q3. This now gives us an excess of demand. There is too much demand for this product. Consumers are demanding Q2, but businesses are only selling Q3. In real life, this looks like a business making Q3 products and then selling them all out. They'll see that this, this, price, this product is popular, and as a result, they will increase the price. This is because the motive of a business is always to maximise their profits. If they were to increase their price to P3, there would still be an excess demand. This would still mean they have uh, too many, their products being sold out too quickly. And seeing their opportunity for more profit, the business will increase their price again. And this will continue until they arrive at P1. So whether the business sets their price above the equilibrium or below the equilibrium, we can see that the forces of excess supply and excess demand will drive the price until it reaches its equilibrium point.